has increased its length by suppose del and this inclined member which is of original length L1 has increased its length which is given by this to delta 1 and this angle is nothing but is equal to alpha. So essentially from here we can have a relationship between the deformation of this inclined bar and the vertical bar. So delta 1 will be equal to delta cos alpha. Now as we know that strain or deformation, strain we know is equal to stress by E. So essentially this deformation or delta by the original length that is suppose L is equal to P by A which is the stress into E. So delta which is the deformation is PL by A. Now if I write this deformation in terms of this I have for delta 1 I will have y l1 by a e and for delta I have x l by a e cos alpha. Now this l1 is nothing but is equal to now cos alpha is equal to l by l1. So l1 is equal to l by cos alpha. So essentially I put here L by cos alpha. Now A e, A e gets cancelled and L and L gets cancelled also. So Y is equal to X cos squared alpha. Right. So Y is equal to X cos squared alpha. So I, I write this here and this is my number 2 equation that I have derived from compatibility conditions given by deformations. Right. So this is my number 2 equation. Now, if I increase the force P, if I increase the force P, it's very easy to understand that from this equation, as, as cos square alpha will be less than 1, Y will be less than X. So, it will reach the, 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 vert, the stress in the vertical bar, which will first reach its end point. But at that moment, the stress in the inclined bars will not reach its end point. So essentially, this vertical bar will be reaching its end point faster than the inclined bar. And for example, this x is nothing but is equal to sigma yp into a. Now, as we increase the load further, there will be certain kind of plastic deformation in this vertical bar. And y will take in more load because this y or this, this inclined bar stress is in elastic zone. So y will take more load till it reaches the end point. So y will be essentially also equal to sigma yp into a. And if we replace this two, first we got to replace two in one. So essentially p will be equal to x plus 2y cos alpha that is 2x cos q alpha. Right. And once I replace this x as sigma yp into a, it will be essentially, now x is equal to 1 plus 2 cos q alpha. And x is equal to sigma yp into a, 1 plus 2 cos q alpha. Right. So from here, we can see through a qualitative analysis that if P is increased in case of a statically determinate structure, Y will, when Y reaches its end point, it ceases to take in more load, as that indicates failure. But in case of a statically indeterminate structure, you have X reaching its end point faster, but Y can take in more load as it has not reached its end point at that point. So essentially, the P ultimate for this structure will be more than a statically determinate structure. And this is P ultimate. And then we can introduce a factor of safety to this P ultimate and get a safe load. So essentially this is the whole concept of plastic design where we are essentially allowing the redundant members to go in the plastic zone whereas the, the non-redundant members will be in the elastic zone and take in more load as compared to a statically determinate structure. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you have enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.